Greetings. I'm Jonathan Hall. Today I'm going to talk about 10 things I like about the Go programming language. So today I'm going to talk about 10 of the things that I like about the Go language and reasons why I like to use this language. In a future video, I'll talk about things I don't like about Go. Or if you're watching this already in the future, there should be a card hovering around over here somewhere that will link to that video and you can just jump over there and watch it now. So I first was introduced to the Go language in 2014. I had been a Perl developer for many years and at the company I was working at at the time, we had a, uh, a process written in Perl that would query a bunch, hundreds of LDAP servers to try to update uh, email contact lists essentially for uh, e email sending. And this was a time consuming process and in Perl it was it was relatively slow. So uh, we wanted to speed this up. You know, it was, it was taking hours to complete this process and we needed to run it multiple times per day. So uh, we decided to try doing it with Go, which was well known, of course, for its concurrency, its Go routines. Uh, so that's what got me started uh, with Go. And of course, that's the first thing I like about Go is the concurrency model. So Go gives us a number of sort of primitive features that make working with concurrency uh, simpler than in many other languages. Uh, you know, of course, Go routines and channels are the two big ones. Those are the two that get the most attention. And th those are, of course, the primitives that, that uh, most of the other features are built upon. Uh, but around that, we also have weight groups and locks and uh, different atomic operations and so on that make working with asynchronous code, essentially, uh, a lot easier to reason about than in many other languages. Uh, so that's that's one of the things that I like about Go. It's it's the sort of the killer feature that gets all the attention, um, which probably makes sense. Although honestly, it's not the most important feature in my view. Uh, but I mentioned it first because it's the one that drove me to start using Go in the first place, and that's a story I hear over and over again from people who are coming, especially from uh, uh, interpreted languages like Perl, uh, in my example, or Ruby or Python or or PHP or, or even Node.js. Uh, a lot of the people come to go from these languages for this very reason. So that's why I mention it first. Of course, related to this idea of concurrency, uh, the reason we want concurrency in the first place is because it helps with performance. So performance, uh, runtime performance in particular, is the second uh, thing that I like about Go. Um, it's largely considered to be as fast or nearly as fast as languages like C or C++. Um, and of course, whether it's as fast or not depends a lot on particulars that I don't care about in this video. Uh, but generally speaking, we can assume that most code written in Go is going to be close to as fast as code written in C or C++ or Java or something like that. Um, any other compiled language, it's, it's well within that, that realm of, of uh, runtime performance. Now, of course, uh, if you, if you want to get uh, really detailed, you can compare Go to various other languages for specific tasks, and Go will be faster than some and slower than others. Um, that's fine. I, I, I'm, I'm not making the claim that Go is the fastest or, or that it has any special capabilities in this regard, uh, but it is fast. It's in the family of fa fast languages. And if you're coming especially from an interpreted language uh, like the ones I just mentioned, then it will definitely be fast. Of course, the others would also. Uh, so I'm not claiming any unique uh, capabilities here per se, uh, but Go is relatively fast. So these are all things that almost everybody talks about. I mean, if you look on any list of things that people like about Go, you're going to get fast compilation, fast runtime, and concurrency. Um, and uh, I think that's natural. I mean, th these are these are attractive characteristics of the language, but honestly, they, they aren't the most important <laughs> to me, and they aren't the reasons that I continue to use Go, the main ones. I mean, I, I like these reasons, but if that was the only thing Go had going for it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't still be here. Honestly, the thing I like most about Go is how easy it is to read. Not even how easy it is to write, but how easy it is to read. A famous quote by Uncle Bob, Bob Martin, says that, indeed, the ratio of time spent reading versus writing is well over 10 to 1. We are consistently reading old code as part of the effort to write new code. Therefore, making it easy to read makes it easier to write. And I think Go does a really good job of, of sort of in, uh, owning this principle and a lot of the decisions that go into the language itself and the standard library and the idioms around Go uh, are designed to make it easy to read. Uh, so that that's really the, the feature that I like the most, or, or category of features I like the most about Go, is how easy it is to read, especially compared to my experience with Perl. 
uh, which is kind of notoriously hard to read. Uh, I like to say that uh, if I were to take a, a, a fresh boot camp graduate uh, for Perl and one from Go, put them side by side, and have the Perl graduate look at code written by the creator of Perl, Larry Wall, and the Go graduate read code written by, say, Rob Pike, one of the co-creators of Go, uh, the Go bootcamp grad would have a far easier time understanding that code. That's not per se a criticism of Perl, if you like that style, but I don't like that style anymore. I used to. I don't anymore. I prefer the Go approach of making code easy to read. So that comes to my next uh, point, which is simplicity. Uh, I like Go's simplicity. Again, comparing to, to Perl, when I was programming Perl, I was very familiar with Tim Toady. Uh, the concept of there is more than one way to do it, an acronym. So this Tim Toady sort of mating call of Perl enthusiasts, if you will, turned out uh, when I started learning Go to be a, an alarm bell uh, for a lot of Go developers and even the creators of Go who really decided to make Go as simple as possible and easy to read as possible. And you know, one really simple example of this I, uh, that I like to point at is uh, in, in Perl, there's at least eight, probably more, ways to do a loop. <laughs> you can do a for loop, a for each loop, a while loop, and an until loop. And each one of those has a forward and a reverse, sort of prefix and postfix versions, at least. There's probably others too. In Go, if you want a loop, you have one way, and that's four. There's not even a while, and that confuses a lot of newbies. Why isn't there a while in, in Go? Well, because you don't need it. Uh, four gives you the same thing. So whereas Perl, uh, for example, prides itself in having more than one way to do each thing, Go prides itself in having usually one right way to do something uh, and, and trying to keep it that way, uh, just to make it simpler, a lower cognitive load when you're reading and writing code. Another key characteristic that makes Go easier to read is its standard formatting. Now, I'm not, a per, I'm not per se a fan of the format, but I'm a fan of the fact that there is a standard format, and it's more or less enforced. I mean, you, you don't have to use the standard format, uh, but if you use the standard Go tools, uh, you will be using the standard Go format, uh, provided by GoFumpt, as it's called. So as the Go proverb says, GoFumpt's style is no one's favorite. Yet Go Fumped is everyone's favorite. And I, and I completely agree with that. Uh, I actually prefer spaces over tabs, but Go Fumped says tabs. So I use tabs in Go, and you know that's fine. Uh, I love the fact that I never have to argue with anybody about tabs versus spaces again. I'm, I would rather be wrong about that or, or have it not go my way than to have to have that conversation. And Go Fumped, uh, the standard format from Go, really uh, gives you that. So that's a favorite feature of mine. So moving on from the readability aspect. Another feature of Go that I really enjoy, uh, which is not at all unique to Go, is that it is both strongly and statically typed. Of course, coming from Perl, that was a big change for me, uh, but I like the change. Uh, I like the assurances that a statically typed and strongly typed language give me. Uh, I'm not going to go into great detail there because there's, I don't have anything unique to say about that. Uh, if you want uh, to read about the, the benefits or drawbacks to strongly versus statically typed and so on and so forth, uh, Google is your friend. Check that out. Um, but I happen to prefer, for most cases, uh, using a strongly statically typed language. But of course, that's not to say there aren't any advantages to a dynamically typed language. But Go has done something kind of unique and given us some of those benefits, even though it's strongly and statically typed. And that comes in the form of untyped constants. In Go, string and numeric literals uh, by themselves are untyped and, and the constants that might re reference them, they're untyped. Uh, so if you if you put a, a string in quotes, uh, we don't know the type of it. I mean, other than that it's sort of a string. <laughs> if in our source code, for example, we have a quoted string, uh, it is considered an untyped string until it is assigned to a constant or a variable of a specific type. Now that type could be a string or it could be any other type that is backed by a string. The flexibility that this concept of untyped constants gives us in Go, I see as sort of a best of both worlds between the uh, static and dynamically typed uh, debate. Uh, I still get the compile time assurances of a statically typed language, but I get some of the convenience of dynamic types. So I, I really like that feature. And while we're talking about types, let's talk about duck typing. So of course, Go uses the concept of an interface for its polymorphism. Uh, but unlike some languages where you have to declare that a particular type is an implementation of another type, or maybe through inheritance, you, you declare that Go just has the concept of duck typing. 
which comes from the concept that if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then it must be a duck. <laughs> so if your type has the methods that are expected, then it is of that interface type is essentially how that's interpreted in Go. So that makes it really easy to, uh, to do polymorphism and gives you flexibility that you don't have in languages that require strict inheritance, for example. So I like duck typing. And that's closely related to the, uh, the next thing on my list that I like, which is that Go does not support inheritance. <laughs> that might seem like blasphemy to somebody coming from an object-oriented language. Um, and in fact, uh, when I first started doing Go, uh, I, I was accustomed to so-called classical or traditional object-oriented programming from Perl, uh, which uses inheritance. And it was so confusing to me. How do I do these things I'm accustomed to doing with inheritance? How do I do that in Go without inheritance? And it took me a while to get there, but I did. And now that I'm there, now that I've arrived, so to speak, I'm very glad that I don't have inheritance. It makes debugging so much easier. Uh, it makes code uh, easier to architect and and cleaner. Uh, so I, pref I I really like the fact that Go does not allow inheritance. And in fact, many uh, many people who use classically object-oriented languages will encourage you not to use inheritance, even in those languages. So Go just makes it not an option, and I like that. So number 10, the last thing on my list, actually I could probably go on and on, but uh, 10 is a nice round number. So the last one on my list for today is the standard tooling that comes with Go. Go just comes out of the box with a large number of really valuable and interesting tools. Uh, and I'm using the word tool fairly broadly here. Uh, I would consider the testing framework, for example, uh, and, the, and the accompanying Go test command to be a tool, uh, and I really like that. Uh, there's also some other command line tools like Go Imports and Go Vet that come as part of the standard Go package that are really valuable and powerful. Uh, and Go Fumped, <laughs> I mentioned that one earlier. That's one of the standard tools that comes with Go. Uh, and then there's also third-party tools that are sort of de facto standards. Uh, one of the best examples of that is probably the Golang CI Lint tool, which I've talked about in a previous video, if you want to watch that. The point is all of these tools, both the ones that come directly from Go itself and some of the third-party tools that are, are sort of become standard, uh, really make for a, a very rich developer experience, a nice ecosystem. And most of them integrate very nicely with any editor or IDE. Uh, you don't need a big fancy editor or IDE. You don't need to pay hundreds of euros or dollars for a, a license if you don't want to. Um, you can set these up with just about anything and they, they run very quickly for the most part. Uh, so you can have a nice developer experience without having to hodgepodge together tools from all over the place uh, or, or paying expensive licensing fees if you don't want to. Of course, if you want to, if you want to pay for a licensing fee for your favorite IDE, more power to you, no problem there, uh, but you don't have to. So there you have it, 10 of my favorite things about the Go programming language. But what did I miss? Leave a comment below and let me know what's your favorite thing about Go. Also be sure to hit the like button and if you aren't already, please subscribe. I'd love to have you back for my next video. Until then, boldly go.